Welcome back whiskey fans. I bet most of you are going to know exactly what this is. It's going to need very little introduction, even if you haven't read the title of the video. This is the 2023 Ardner Merkin Sherry Cask release. It's a very popular and very hot topic at the moment, not only because it's Ardner Merkin, and Ardner Merkin seems to be everyone's favourite distillery these days, but also because it's very good. So this one has been released very recently. It's this year's release. We don't yet know if this is going to be an annual thing, but I would guess there's almost certainly going to be very similar things coming up in future years. I believe off the top of my head, I think this was bottled in April and it's been on sale for a few months. There is still some of this left, at least here in the UK. I bought this one from the really good whiskey company. It's also still for sale on, I'm just checking here, whiskey exchange and Really good whiskey company. I paid £65 for this. Whiskey Exchange, £66.75. Royal Mile Whiskies as well. They've still got a few in stock at about £63. A lot will be cheaper, but I think you do have to pay delivery there. So price across the board. I'm not really seeing anyone hyping this up and charging a premium, which is good. Also very, very good that after several months, this is still available. Although I think if you do want a bottle of this and you haven't got one yet, probably best to act sooner rather than later. Details from, not from the label on this one, because it's an Ardner Merck and give you a close up of what label there is and the bottle. So it's a very attractive presentation. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that the most attractive part of this whiskey's presentation is not the bottle or the label, it's that wonderful colour, which we know is 100% natural colour because it's not an American and it always is. We also know that of course it's non chill filtered. But the label on this one it's your standard affair from Arden American small understated label at the bottom and on the back the important bit. If anyone wants to use that QR code I'll wait until it comes into focus and you can do that. Hopefully you can get that because as with all other Americans, there is an absolute focus. Come on. There we go. There is an absolute abundance of information. If you scan that QR code, it tells you everything from what cask types go in, how many cask types, what year they were filled, and what the previous contents of each cask was. Also got lots of information about the cut points, the fermentation, and where the barley was grown really is everything we could ask for. So for this Ardner Merkin 2023 sherry cask release, it's 50% ABV. It's matured in a combination of Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez casks. The cut points for this whiskey are 76.5% and 66.7%. So a little bit higher than your regular. We know that this is a vatting of 25 casks producing a total outturn of 13,998 bottles. Curiously, my bottle is bottle number 675, and it does seem that I always tend to get a very low bottle number, especially seeing as I didn't really act on this one too swiftly. This has been out for, I think, a few months now, and I've only had this for about probably a week and a half. So the fact that I tend to get low bottle numbers possibly tells you that the big online retailers in the UK possibly get preferential treatment. Out of those 25 casks that have gone into the vatting of this, we've got 15 unpeated sherry hogsheads, comprised of two Spanish oak Pedro Jimenez casks, six American oak Oloroso casks, and seven Spanish oak Oloroso casks. We've also got 10 Spanish oak Oloroso sherry butts, which are peated. So out of those 25 casks in the vatting, we've got 15 unpeated and 10 peated. Interestingly, and unusually for an Ardner Merkin, this is actually a single vintage release. So whereas normally a mass produced vatting for any other distillery or most distilleries could be made up of whiskey laid down in casks from various years, possibly with a large difference in the years when the spirit was actually distilled, every cask that's gone into the vatting for this one, they were all filled in 2018. And I really like that. I, from my experience, I tend to really get on with single vintage releases. 
It obviously keeps the price down compared to single cask whiskey, but I think it produces a whiskey of a more singular character. I think single vintage can give an experience closer to single cask, with perhaps more harmonious vatting than what you get from a multi-vintage vatting. Not to say that there's anything at all wrong with multi-vintage vattings, but obviously with differences over the years, it can take a lot of skill and perhaps a bit of luck to get all of that to blend well. So yeah, in my opinion, single vintage vatting, probably the next best thing to a very, very small batch like two, three casks or a single cask. Also being bottled in 2023 and filled in 2018 that we know that all of the spirit in this is going to be around five years old. So without any further ado, let's get some in the Ardmer Merkin glass. Because what else would you drink this out of? Fantastic. Beautiful, natural, sherry cask matured colour. So on the nose, really intense sweet sherry, a little bit of a kind of black currant liqueur note actually reminds me a little bit of the Norfolk PX liqueur, this thing. Lots of dry wood smoke on the nose, dry wood smoke and kind of a burnt charcoal, charcoal barbecue note. And that dry charcoal, burnt woody smokiness really cuts through the sweet sherry really, really well. Beautiful contrast of sweet and dry on this one. Getting an aroma of almost peated black currants. It's kind of like setting fire to a black currant bush on a rainy, muddy day. Also getting some dark fruits and some red grapes note. Lovely full-bodied maltiness. Surprising amount of serially malty character coming through on this one. It's obviously not at the forefront. The sherry really, really takes centre stage on this one, as you'd expect. But the malt really doesn't back down. The malt is definitely there and it makes its presence known. Lovely cereal notes. Muesli with sultanas and almonds. Getting a little bit of a wine gums note. As well as a very faint slightly fainty sweatiness and a little bit of menthol. A little bit of an old man in a jumper with cough sweets note. Quite peppery on the nose as well. Quite a bit of oak spice coming through and you can tell that there has been some proper European oak in this one. It's got that dry, spicy, slightly bitter, aggressive sherry oak. Peppery European oak. A little bit of ground nutmeg on the nose. And perhaps a tiny little bit of flinty sulphur. But it all goes together so, so well. That slightly dirty, fumy, sulphury sherry. No mixes with the, the sweet sherry. Just a really intoxicating, slightly fumy sweetness on the nose. Obviously, aside from the peat on the nose of this one, that actually reminds me of some good Armagnacs in a good way. So let's see how it tastes. Very sweet, as you might expect. Lots of sweet sherry. You can really taste the actual sherry itself and probably the sweetness coming through from those American oak casks. Lots of sweet grape, sweet prune juice. But then immediately the peatiness and the aggressive oak spice comes through and balances everything out really, really well. Getting lots of warming peated malt on the palate. And it really is a very pleasantly warming peatiness. It's not really your kind of overly medicinal, overly dirty peatiness. It's really your trademark Ardnamurkan pea. Anyone that's had non-Ardnamurkan 
before we'll recognize the peat in this. Kind of halfway between perhaps a highland peat like an Ardmore and edging towards a little bit of a Talisker peatiness. Lots of nice malty notes coming through as well. Lots of nutty maltiness, a little bit of an almond note. I do think, and this might be controversial, but I do think that this is still slightly on the light side for what you would expect from a 50% ABV whiskey. And I can perhaps see why they decided that they didn't want to go all the way to cask strength, but they decided to boost this from their standard 46.8 up to 50%. I think that if this had been bottled at the 46% strength, the amount of sherry oak in this might have made it a little bit unfocused. But the important thing is that they did boost it to 50%. I think that the 50% strength of this one is the perfect drinking strength for this whiskey, and it works really, really well. Lots of dark fruit notes on the palate. Raisins, cherries, black forest gatto. A little bit of a, a dry mineral gravelly note as well. Probably more maltiness coming through on this one towards the late palate as that sherry, the sweet sherry starts to fall away and it's met with the peat and then it leads on really nicely to that maltiness as well as some really nice toasted oak spice notes and a little bit of black pepper on the end. As for the finish on this one, I'm going to go with long, dark and sweet with a growing flintiness and burnt grist and a really pleasant lingering sweet hazelnut maltiness. So. Hats off to Arden Merkin again, probably unsurprising for many of you whiskey folk that this is a glowing review yet again. I haven't really heard many negative reviews about Arden Merkin at all. There's a few people saying that it's potentially a bit overpriced for how old it is, but that's the nature of young distilleries. And yes, it's young, but in my opinion that doesn't get in the way of the flavours that we've got here, which are already near perfect. In my humble opinion, no, this doesn't taste old. It doesn't taste like really, really mature, high age statement whiskey, but it also doesn't need to, and it's not trying to be that. This, in my opinion, is a perfect example of a potential future for Scotch whiskey. I think in a world where we can't keep up with the demand for old whiskey and old age statements become available or unobtainable, i.e. unaffordable. This is kind of a glimpse of that promised but seldom delivered future of no aid statement whiskey that all of those distilleries that started pushing NAS no aid statement whiskey about 10 years ago promised us. It's that whiskey that focuses on flavour and quality over age. And yes, you can get great flavours without having to spend a long time in the cask. They are different flavours, absolutely, but young whiskey doesn't have to be bad, or even immature. And absolutely what flavours we have in this admittedly young whiskey from Arden American. Excellent and really seamless balance of the Oloroso and PX. Anyone that knows the Sherry's knows that Oloroso and PX can be, well, are, or should be, very, very different things and very different flavour profiles. And I think that they're both very well represented in this whiskey and in excellent balance with neither one taking over. And it's also got an excellent balance between the sherry and the malt and the pea and the oak for that matter. It's an incredibly well made whiskey. The sherry does take centre stage as you would expect, but that really is what you would expect from a whiskey with the cask breakdown and the name that we've got on this one sherry cask release. If you do like that sherry that's in this one if you've tried it but you thought that the sherry was a little bit too much I'd really recommend trying some of the AD releases, the standard expression from Arden American because they still have quite a bit of sherry in them but it's much toned down compared to this and there's perhaps a little bit more pee in the, in the AD releases but for those of you out there who are sherry fans and peated sherry fans this one is really really great Closest things to this for anyone who's considering buying this who might not be sure if it's for them. It reminds me quite a bit of all the other great sherried, peated, young single malts. So things like if you've had Ben Romack, their peated and sherried whiskies. I think they did one. They've done a few that are all probably around eight or nine years old. 
and usually cask strength and they're phenomenal whiskies quite similar to this and if you've tried the English whiskey company peated and sherried releases they are reasonably similar to this and also if you enjoy Ugadal, I think Ugadal is perhaps a little bit more aggressive than this but really same ballpark and if you like Ugadal, then I'm pretty sure you'd like this as well my only very very slight minor criticism about this and it's really not a problem is that for a 50% whiskey it is that little bit light in body which just seems to be a part of the Ardnamurkan style I think but I do think that this is very young whiskey and I think that's something that's going to improve with age by the time Ardnamurkan gets up to 10-15 years old that I think that's really going to bring the maltiness out and it's going to give that so much more body and complexity and just more power behind it and I think that's really going to make Ardnamurkan really spectacular as it is though the fact that they have very wisely decided to boost this one to 50% ABV really makes that a non-problem I think that £65 for this ultra craft presented fantastic little whiskey is a really good buy let me know what you think about this one if you've had it and what's your favourite Ardnamurkan? Thanks for watching and cheers.